story you asked for. Christmas and then you stories. said uh, you said feminism is a cancer. Yeah. Care to elaborate at all? Or? Yeah, I think that it is. I think one of the main reasons even you are so c cynical about divorce, which is, I mean, not divorce, marriage, which you know what, I'm not saying it's invalid by any means, is because of what feminism has turned society into. Exactly. I'm, st I'm just saying. Absolutely right. I'm just saying it's, it's made women extremely self-serving and it's not that women shouldn't care about themselves, but come on, we went polar, we went polar like the opposite direction. And I think we started blaming men for every single issue and problem in the world. And men have started, a lot of men have started bowing the knee to that. And yeah. that's just empowered these women more because if these men didn't allow women to continue with this narrative, that they said enough, it would be over. But so many of these men are just, they wanted to sleep with these chicks or something. Oof, that's a very knees. gynocentric No, it's not. No, I'm not blaming you men. You immediately moved over to what about the men, though, right away. You started, hang on, you started strong with the feminism is at fault and there's some female accountability. You moved right, right to what about the men, though. No, no, I, right do, I do have to ask you, though. I do have to ask you. Do you believe um, that men allow women to... to do men run things, ultimately? Is there a patriarchy? Do you believe that? Yeah, I think that ultimately, due to forced doctrine, things will reduce down to a patriarchy. But men operate within a hierarchy, and that's a portion of the problem that women don't seem to understand because they don't yeah. operate in one. Right. So just... when women make the counter-argument, no, this is really the patriarchy's fault, which is a feminist argument that you're currently making. No, actually, you're you wrong. Forget. Actually, I'm oh, all for okay. the patriarchy. So, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not the patriarchy's fault? No. So it's not, it's not men's fault that they're enabling women to do this? No. I just think ultimately, though, men are the ones in power. And that, okay. to, me, to me, that's a good thing. I'm all for the uh -huh. patriarchy. But I men just are think, ultimately in power, which I means think, whose fault is it? Oh, it's not about faults. I just think that men. No, no, answer I my question. That, if I men think are that men should empowered. stand up to the to women. I just think they I'm, should. I'm not going to let you evade, right? You're going to have to answer evading. the question. If men, I'm just looking for a logical extension here. Okay. If men are ultimately the ones who are in power. Correct. Then whose fault would this be? I think that it's still the women's decision to do those things that are wrong. Yeah, I think it's the the woman's fault. But I think that men ultimately because I believe men are more powerful than women, because I'm not delusional, I think that mm -hmm. if they put a stop to it, it could stop. Then if they have the power to stop it and they're not stopping it, but I think they it's could to, stop it, I think it's whose fault women. is it? I think it's just to appease women, honestly, because women make a lot of noise. So they then that would be men's it. fault again. <laughs> No, actually, it's not about fault. That's not what I'm saying. Not even. But how would it not be? Like, look, I'm listening to your logic here, right? Right. right. So we're going to start with A, mm -hmm. okay? Men are appeasing women, and they don't have to. But well, they have ultimate force to stop appeasing women, and they're not. And they're at the top of the hierarchy. So then whose fault are you saying it is? I still think it's the woman's fault, but I think it's because and men... How do you square that with these arguments? I don't understand Let me that. explain. Let me explain. Okay, I think I'm, that men. I think that men are not all uh, cruel and brutal like women say they are. A lot of feminists say they are. I think that they have soft hearts, and I think they do allow women to have a lot of rights and power and control. But I think even you would agree that ultimately, if a, if men wanted to, they could put a stop to everything. Men are the ones that allow women to have rights. It's them. It, we know that. Uh, it's, it's, so well, can you then, disagree? Then, hang on. Then. <clears throat> Hang on, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Right. Then ultimately, whose fault would that be? I still think it's the woman's Women's fault. Women's fault. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Women so, are still. No, I'm, no, trying, no. I'm trying to square this. I know. I get ultimately, what you're men have the power to put a stop to all of it, but they don't. Right. So let me ask you a question. I have the power to stop uh, some fucking heinous action, right? And I don't do it, but I have the power to. I could do it, They're but I don't mess. do it. Then whose mm -hmm. fault is that? I, I lost you. This is this is this is not a black and white thing. That's the thing. It's it's not. It sounds pretty black no, and no, white. No, no, it's not. It's not. Ultimately, it's a fault. It's because men and women, human beings, they are not perfect. Men are not always going to make ultimately perfect judgment calls. They mm -hmm. do it because they do care about women. Men are good to women. They give us rights. However, I'm just saying that women are running with these. 
a lot of these rights and they're going a bit crazy and it's ruining our society in many ways. I do think that men, because I believe men are stronger than women and men do ultimately hold the control, which I think you couldn't even argue with. Uh, I think that if they really wanted to, they could put a stop no, to it. It would just no, be no, very no, painful. No, you're, you're wrong on many levels here. Let okay. me explain how. Okay, I'm interested. Let's see. It, and it's because you forget about the hierarchy. You okay. forget about a hierarchy. So again, this is because you don't operate inside of one. There are very few bad actors, mostly rich industrialists, which empowered feminism. Okay, and still do to this day, by the way. The same actual families empower feminism. Same types of rich industrialists throughout uh, about 125 years have really pushed this agenda. Okay, but inside of this hierarchy, most of the men are actually disenfranchised from doing much about it, short of some type of extreme, well, I can't even get into what, what it would take on YouTube, but right. it would be extreme yeah. to do something about this, okay? Fair. It would be an extreme response to do anything about it because you still are operating inside this hierarchical structure. Women don't operate in hierarchical structures. They only compete with each other. That's it. There's no hierarchy. There never sure. has been a hierarchy. There's never going to be a hierarchy. Okay. There's no hierarchy that women have. They only compete with men, usually for the men at the top of these hierarchies. Mm -hmm. So it is true that ultimately this teeny tiny group of men may have some power here, okay? And they may have some authority where they're working with, uh, you know, various women in order to do this. Mm -hmm. The disenfranchised men or the people who, the men are at the bottom of this hierarchy, they would have to control it only through an extreme means. And so I when I say that all, yeah. all powers reduce, right? Or uh, I'm sorry, all powers reduce to physical force. Ultimately it is, mm -hmm. okay? But it's not the responsibility of men who are born into a disenfranchised position to halt female narcissism. No, no. You know what I mean? No, no. Yeah, I think that wouldn't be that wouldn't be their responsibility to do. That's that's a good that's a good way to put it. I get what you're saying and I don't disagree with you. It would have to be absolutely extreme measures and should that be put on the man's shoulder? No. I think that I'm just speaking passionately, but it's not mm -hmm. specifically that I think and I actually do not think it's the men's fault. Extreme action would have extreme consequences and it would yes, be a disaster dire right it would be dire it would, it dire would be it would be dire right. i just think it would help in day to day like even him saying i'm not getting married it's not worth it even vocalizing that even though i disagree that that's the best outcome for a man's life is going to help that movement of not bowing the knee to the woman so i'm just saying that that to me is a is well a then it sounds like he has every incentive in the world not to get married correct correct i still think he ought to though yeah, but you have to. Okay, so we we got to get we got to get into this a little bit more. Sure. Ought the the supposition of ought meaning this is something you should do, you should do it. Okay, Brian's not a Christian, so from a secular perspective, yet actually tell yes. me why. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get him there, but actually tell me why he as a secularist man, you're sitting across from him. He doesn't believe in God. He doesn't believe in any of that hoodoo, voodoo, witchcraft, right? <laughs> and you have to make a secular argument to him from a secular perspective, from a non-believer's perspective. Why should he do it? Yeah, it's the same exact thing I said earlier. It's just a matter of, it's the matter of the ceremony of the commitment. And not a lot of people, not everyone would agree with that. And that's secular. That's something that would appeal to the secular, not just the religious. But how would you, that appeal to a secularist? Well, to, to make to, to make a to commitment. Make, okay, so is, let's is say a secularist goes out and he goes. They they put on little hula skirts, right, and they dance naked in the moonlight, and that's their commitment to each other. Okay, is that just as valid to you as like a Christian marriage is? You know, I th I think that it is a bit complicated. You know, I I get what you're saying. I just think I think to those who are not married, they just wouldn't quite get it but you're married i think you do get it it's just no a bit, no 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 listen i don't connection. get it i'm okay. trying to understand it okay right so i am married mm -hmm. but i have this great wonderful enforcement mechanism called god right, right. called right. god and my faith and i have a church which governs uh portions of my marriage and these things are necessary inside of the confines of marriage you have to have mm -hmm. community also as a support for marriage, that's one of the big things missing in society, which only church can bring. Okay, yeah. but Brian over there, I'm assuming, so in my brain I go like this. I think to myself, this guy 
not in, it doesn't even have to be Brian specifically, but any guy I'm talking to, he's like, you know, Andrew, I like you. You're a smart guy, blah, 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 blah. But I don't believe in this God shit. I just don't believe in it. I hate it. I think it's bullshit. I think it's nonsense. Tell me why I should get married. I can't come up for it with a single reason. I can. Okay. In modernity, give me a single reason which I is can. valid. I want to hear it so bad. I'm ready. Uh, I am certain that... When Brian is truly, truly in love, and he knows that he met a super special woman who makes his life better, and who just brings the best in him, and brings the peace, and she wants marriage, he will do that for her in order to stabilize their relationship. Okay, hang on, hang on. If she's giving him all of that shit, before he marries her, then uh, why the fuck would he marry her? No, he, hang on, hang he on, listen. Needs a good Don't Christian talk before girl I Hang on, I just giving. listen to everything. Stop, stop, stop. I Thank listen you, to everything you say, but you cut me off before I finish my point, go right? Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So I'm going to ask you directly, listen to what I'm saying before you respond. If you're giving the man all of that stuff, right, the, all the adoration, all the love, bringing peace in his life, and you think he's great, you think he's wonderful, and you throw roses at his feet, you make him fucking bacon and eggs every morning while you're giving him a back massage. You're that talented. And you're like, honey, but I'd really like you to marry me. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. And you keep on doing that shit. Why the fuck would he marry you? Can you explain that to me? Absolutely. Okay. So it will it, it will be actually a progression. Uh when a uh, when person be, uh, receives love and care and uh, unconditional love, it is at first it is very uh, um, it's kind of foreign at the beginning. But then the person becomes addicted to that, and they want more and more and more. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, yeah, and uh, so when the woman is consistent. Mm -hmm. And she actually believes that her man, who may be not exactly 100% yet, but she believes in him and yeah. helping him grow and, most importantly, helps both of them grow together. Sure. Then I'm absolutely, at, at some point, and she is, you know, I agree with you, and she is Christian woman. So, yeah, she gives everything. No, no, no. no. She There's gives no everything. There's Christianity involved. You smuggled in the Christianity. These are secular. Okay, she has standards. Right. Hang standards. On, hang on. He's with a woman who's not Christian. Okay, she and does have standards, and she's high value woman. Okay, so sure. she gives 100% of herself. Yep. And uh, she invests herself in him, mm -hmm. and they yep. grow together, and they go through challenges together, supporting yep. each other. Eventually, yep. eventually, and I've seen it happening with my clients, okay? I've seen it happening with so many guys, the men who uh, really didn't feel love and unconditional love for a long time. They're just shutting themselves down. The woman comes into their life, Mm -hmm. who is filled up with love and care, and she is connected with him 100%, Sure. those men go through transition. And yes, at some point, they do see her as someone who is super, super special. And I have experienced that with many of my that clients. That has nothing her. to do. Okay, listen, I'm going, to, I'm going to just grant all of this. You're right. So let's go through the stages, right? What They're is, going through the stage. Hang on. Yeah. They're going through the stages. Yep. He, she she sees him and she, he sees her as super duper ultra special. They're the most ultra specialist people who could ever be ultra special to each other. No two people have ever had this kind of interpersonal connection. Why the fuck does he need to marry her? I don't know. Like, can you explain that part? How we get from that to the marriage because he wouldn't Why would he want, actually need to do that to have all of that shit? Because he wouldn't want that person to give love to someone else. He yeah, but that want person... To see it, wait, that wait, it's himself. baked into your but hypothetical here. But because she here. wants that. So the... Uh, what? It's baked in your hypotheticals that she's already got the it best... It is proven by Hang practice. On. Already got the best connection ever. He doesn't have to worry about her giving affection to anybody else. So why the fuck would he marry her? Well, 
if he did not make a commitment to that person fully uh -huh. through the point of uh, marriage, then she, then and this is something she that leave. she wants. Then she would leave, right? Yeah. So it's emotional hostage taking. It is what? You each emotional get. Emotional hostage taking. So you what, you're saying, is this. what you're saying is this. Hey, look. He I looks... Hang on, hang on. But listen, here's what you're actually saying. Listen to what I'm saying. I love you more than life itself. You're the best thing on earth. I love and adore you, and I'll love and adore you till the day that I die. You need to marry me. And he's like, no, I'm still going to treat you like you're my wife, but I'm not actually going to get married to you, and I love and adore you too. And she goes, well, if you're not going to marry me, then I'm going to fucking leave. Well, then it doesn't sound like she really loved him and thought he okay. was the greatest and thought he was the best. It sounds like maybe she didn't really think that. You each so get, hold on, hold on, hold on. You each get 20 seconds. Go ahead. So you're talking about final, manipulation. Final point. Final point for you're both. You're talking about manipulation and idolizing someone. I'm talking about purity and kindness of the heart. That's all. Mm. Okay? I, well, Something I get it. Okay, but when I'm talking, but the, it may, still makes no sense. Because if she had all this adoration, loved him, thought he was the greatest ever, and performed as though she did, and he said he wouldn't marry her, Right, and she says, "Well, then I'm leaving." That's a shit test. That's the opposite of all of those qualities you're talking about. He would. That's say... why I think that absent God and absent Christianity, there can be no true marriage. It's just cope. It's just cope. It's pure. Cope. I got to move it on. I got to move it on. 